Baltimore City Hall is timeless, stunning, and contains the space available to be functional. It has been re-engineered to be so. We today are going to have the sincere pleasure and fun of running through Baltimore's own City Hall, constructed in 1875, which first broke ground on the site in 1867. Pioneering and engineering brilliance, Baltimore City Hall is representative of a post-Civil War community's utilitarian resilience. The history of this site began before its construction and has a history of uniting Baltimore City civilians when encountering strife such as war outbreaks, war booms, and economic depressions. Walking through this historic monument, we see the intent of not only the city, for the people to create a part of the new United North American Governmental Kingdom structures. This is a structure that embodies timelessness, as well as the power of a unified working body. Baltimore held three competitions for the design of their city hall. Each winning design exceeded not only the budget, but also the presumed site scale. The first project was won by architect William T. Marshall, who designed a stunning structure. It was projected to be massively over budget. William T. Marshall vanished, presumed dead by the American Civil War soon after this first competition. The second ill-fated event was delayed by the ending of the American Civil War, thereby rendering the second competition for Baltimore City Hall unsuccessful. The third competition was then instituted with a project budget of $600,000. The design that ultimately won was projected to cost over $2,270,000. George A. Frederick embodied this design in the Napoleon Second Empire style with a touch of Baroque revival throughout the interior. As this was Frederick's first commission of such a scale, he ensured expedient construction by working closely with each contractor. That said, he encountered a series of mistakes from his own working hand mislabeling of materials and the purchase of unnecessary construction goods are two examples. Multiple engineers were hired to guarantee a strong constructed structure. Baltimore's conceptual design of City Hall married discordant social stratas together in common ground. As citizens of the city of Baltimore, strengthened by the militias returning from war, an influx of new capital-driven developers, and the establishment of municipal government in Baltimore. It gave rise to the moniker and chrysalis of local pride for generations to come to be Baltimore. The town not only united in common ground over the construction of City Hall, but also the construction of one such hall by way of salvage materials and a strong workforce outfitted with even stronger engineering force one which would go on to accept a novel building process through its ironwork center dome and tower. Baltimore City Hall was constructed for an exuberant cost, as well as over any allotted budget, yet the constructed monument had the scale, strength, and architectural associationism to be functionally relevant to Baltimore's municipal governmental evolution. Frederick and his firm won Baltimore's third City Hall competition. This construction was not only the first major commission for the 22-year-old architect George A. Frederick, but the first project of that scale for the Baltimore's building companies. In most cases of building structure, as time wanes, a building is not able to weather a great influx in workforce or population due to size constraints and lack of space. Yet, Baltimore's City Hall prevails. Given its later 20th century ingenious adapted installation of two additional floors within the tallest two levels, utilizing dead spaces as well as basement spaces, Baltimore, in a post-antebellum co-op, opted to devise a city hall scheme befitting landmark status. The collective Baltimorean population desired to pioneer a structure that would serve as a paragon to American infrastructure, architecture, and government. At the time, the Second Empire style was a strong trend, and the design exceeding the allotted budget was not a great concern with the high spirits after the end of the American Civil War. 
a monument significant of the Capitol building and the White House in D.C., with an evolution in the postmodern style air of mansard roofs, bewildered Baltimoreans from the very beginning. The National Historic Registry describes Baltimore City Hall as being located on 100 North Holiday Street between Fayette on the south and Lexington on the north. The design for City Hall consists of a center structure four stories high, surmounted by a dome and flanked by three-story wings connected laterally to the main element. The center is finished with a plain pediment, originally designed to contain a frieze representing trade, commerce, and the arts, but it was never executed. The other portions of the building are capped by a mansard roof, and each story is well marked by the strong projecting cornices, as well as a broken balustrade which forms horizontal divisions between the stories and at the base of the roof. The exterior foundation walls, which are 5 feet 6 inches thick, are built of Falls Road bluestone to within 18 inches of the ground. All of the interior walls vary in thickness from 2 feet 6 inches to 7 feet, and the widest dimension occurs at the base of the dome, where the foundation walls support the central mass. Among the many objects of which Baltimoreans may be justly proud is the new City Hall. It is one of the most elegant structures in the United States, occupying the entire square on which it is erected. It stands out in bold relief, impressing the observer at every point of which it its gracefulness and grandeur can be viewed. Quote from George Washington Heil, 1873. We see the power of Baltimore in this Second Empire-style monument along with the implications of a new government expected to govern intelligently and fiercely, like that of Francis Napoleon Bonaparte III. Now, Masingo Designs is proud to take you along to the second half of this tour by exalting the beauty of architect George Frederick's constructed brainchild. Baltimore saw a work boom and economic shift to becoming a landmark of the newly united North America with the installment of City Hall. Projected to cost three million dollars with a project budget of a million dollars, not only did the design of George A. Frederick exceed the expectations of grand beauty, but the project also came in more than seven hundred thousand dollars under the later extended budget. The drastic amount that City Hall came under budget by allowed for an unexpected massive distribution of excess capital granted by the federal government for rebuilding of Baltimore after the American Civil War. The majority of the project's labor and materials was provided in assistance with working Baltimoreans and federal assisted grants. The cooperation of this combined collective helped Baltimore City expand into a point of industry, trade, and art for the newly reunited North America. This $700,000 was more than enough and more than most received to reinvent their involving towns. The surplus of financial capital granted by the federal government and effective labor provided by Baltimore contractors encouraged the 700000 to be spent on the common people through the building of parks, comfortable public leisure zones, public transportation, and other city civilian vestibule projects. When looking at the City Hall of Baltimore, there are prominent neoclassical exterior facades, neo-baroque interiors, and city hall furniture designed by George A. Fredericks to match this monument style. The scale of this project allowed for many other offices of administration or development to reside within the extensive office rooms of City Hall helping streamline the functional progression of Baltimore's municipal future. By way of a post-Civil War communal effort, George A. Frederick's Baltimore City Hall today bespeaks resilience, ingenuity, and engineering prowess. Walking through this historic monument, we see the intent of not only the city, but the people to create a new part of the united North American governmental kingdom structures. 
This is a structure that embodies timelessness, as well as the power of a unified working body. Monumentality and timelessness are only the first stages of a piece of architecture surviving societal progression. As we walk through the structure of City Hall, have you noticed the care and craftsmanship put into every square foot of the design space? It is clear that the Baltimorean people work tirelessly to describe their value and their communal pride through careful care in construction.